Okay, everybody, it's that time. It is Wednesday, October 12th, and we are here for Bead Shop Live. I'm Kate Richburg, and in just mere moments, Janice is going to be joining us. Two things I wanted to say beforehand. We're doing a live stream with me on the East Coast and Janice on the West Coast. No, switch that. With me on the West Coast and Janice on the East Coast. I don't even know where I am. Uh, so if there are any technical issues or anything today, just hang with us. I have my IT hat on and my designer hat so I can write them very quickly. But we've practiced and I think we are good to go. The second thing I wanted to mention, everybody, you guys are doing such a great job and we are so, so grateful um, for all of the social shares, for all of the, the reposts, all of the posting in our groups, all the questions you ask, all of that on social. You can find us at beadshop.com on Instagram. Join our Facebook group, The Bead Table on Facebook, and please, on YouTube, if you would hit, take that moment right now to hit like, subscribe, and turn those notifications on. Our subscribers are really, really going strong, and I want to hit that 100,000 subscriber mark before the end of the year, and I know you can help us do that. It'll really help us continue to bring you such amazing content here from beadshop.com. And when we hit 100,000, there might be some special things that are going to go on. Well, if you're ready, you guys, I am ready. And let us bring in the lovely and amazing Janice Parsons. And Janice, uh, you need to unmute yourself somehow, I believe. Hold that thought. Let me unmute the phone. Um, no. I bet, Janice, your earbuds are connected to your phone. I mean, to your computer. Let's see. Can you hear me? You look amazing. We cannot hear you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and remove you from the stream and I'm going to let you connect, uh, just disconnect your earbuds, I think, from your computer, from StreamYard. Go and make sure you're using the correct, um, the correct uh, uh, ears. There we go. And she'll, she'll get that. She'll get that going. Um, I wanted to mention another couple of things while Janice is uh, fixing her microphone. Uh, Gita is over on Facebook and she's saying hello over there. Um, everything for this project that Janice is doing is right on the homepage at beadshop.com. Let me... Uh, put that up on our, there we go. So you can click right on the home page and it'll take you right to this really fantastic project of Janice's. Now, uh, Janice, go ahead and see if um, we can take your, um, I'm going to, add you back but i think your phone is here which is great and i can't unmute your microphone there and i can't unmute your mic on the computer but i'm going to add your computer to the stream and we're going to see if we can make this happen so there you are so janet if you are looking at oh there you go i think you're on say yeah. something Hello. there you are there we are. Perfect. Yes. Can you turn up your speakers a little louder on sure. your computer? How is that? Great. Better? Great. That's better. Oh, okay. Great. Great. Okay. Just project. As my drama teacher used to say, Kate, project to the back of the house. So same thing with you, JP. Okay. 
Hello. <laughs> hello. So everyone is saying hello, Janice. People want to know how you're doing. How's your knee feeling? Um, you're, you have new bionic knee, bionic eyes, and you look amazing. We oh. should all look this good for 50 years old. Oh, I you wish. Look, that was you incredible. look fantastic. But when I go to the gym and I have to pick a locker, I go to like 46 or 38. I go, okay, today I'm going to be 46. <laughs> I think that's great. Uh, it's really nice. So how are you, Katie? You doing well? I'm well, and I'm really excited about this project today because this is... Whenever you, and I'll tell you guys this, this is kind of a little secret between bead shop uh, employees. We, you know, Janice always says, I'm going to make a project. And then Drea and I go, great, make a project. And then it evolves. So you see me evolve on screen. Janice does all of her evolution behind the scenes. So I'm never quite sure the thing i am sure of is the project is going to be amazing but oh. i'm never quite sure what it's going to look like so when this came out of our box the box that claire sent me after she photographed it i was like well that's one for the ages it's gorgeous oh, so that's you're going to talk a little bit about kind of the evolution of the design that came up to this piece, right? Mm -hmm. You've yeah. got a lot of samples that you're going to share today. And then we're both going to chat a little bit about pearl knotting and how to achieve it. Nice. Um, so everyone is saying that they are ready. So I'm going to add okay. Janice, your board okay. right here. Okay. Let me. Get and it. let's nice. go ahead and lay that out. There you go. And I'm going to actually make that a full screen. Okay. So whenever you're ready, JP, let's get this show on the road. Okay, great. And then if I am suddenly not, uh, you can't really hear me, just be sure to put in louder. Kate will see that. And I will tell me. So uh, I'll let you know as the moderator on YouTube, we can't see your hands. So <laughs> that's right. So I, I have a board here. Uh, this is one of those ultimate design boards, uh, but you don't have to have this to do this project. But this uh, this design really started with a couple of things. It started with uh, poetry, which is one of our most popular projects where we used um, the beautiful uh, freshwater pearl button for one end. And we're going to use that again today. It's such an ingenious way to close. I just love it. And the one of the things I love about this, Kate, is that for those people who have metal allergies, the entire necklace has no metal. Nothing. Right. It's, right. Using yeah. that pearl, if you don't add any metal spacers right. or anything, or it's charm. completely metal free right. or a charm. Yeah. So Beautiful. It's got the button um, that's made a freshwater pearl. And it has a macrame loop. And this project we're doing today has this, this technique as part of it. The other uh, part of the necklace that's really important is that we used um, the griffin feed cord or gouda broad, as we used to call it in the old days. And they come on these, um, they come in these packets, different sizes. Um, uh, is that me making that noise? I guess. No, but that's prop. Is it? Is that me? It could be me as well. Oh, okay. Um, they come in all different sizes uh, from, I believe it's zero to 13 or 14. We carry two through um, eight. Uh, and eventually we may expand it, but this is the smallest size. This is the largest that we carry. And they come with um, a needle attached. So the nice thing about this um, particular 
uh, thread is that, and I, I want to make sure you can see it. On, oh, we can't see it. Oh, there we go. Is that the needle is actually extruded onto um, the thread. And I'm going to get something so you can really see it. You can't really see it that well. Let's take this. And then do you see that, everybody, how it's attached? It's a thin needle so that when you're stringing on pearls or gems or beads with small holes, you don't have your thread doubling over uh, at the point where the needle also loops around and attaches. This is basically one streamlined um, uh, motion. And so you don't have the wear and tear on your thread. So that's the beauty of this thread, along with that it's also twisted. Um, and so we like the Gouda Broad, and, or we really call it now Beadsmith Griffin. Gouda Broad is the old school when it came from uh, from it when it was originally made in Germany. It may still be made in Germany. I'm not, I'm not really sure. Um, but what I have always loved this particular thread for, and I'm going to get this underneath again. Why did I take it away so quickly? Um, is that it's a thread that can stand up to becoming a float. We have, if you go to uh, projects and you go to uh, uh, archived, you will find in there one of our most popular and original projects, which uh, we named Tin Cup. And that was after the movie that Rene Russo was in with um, Kevin Costner, the, the movie about golf, I believe. And she wore this necklace uh, and it was the first time anyone had ever seen. I had never seen anything like this. And so you can find on our website, the tin cup necklace, which uses the Gouda broad. And the nice thing about this, even in silk, is that it's a heavy duty thread that will last. It, it works against your skin, against your body oils, anything that might damage uh, a regular silk. Um, so that's the beauty of this. So those are the two things I wanted to share um, about uh, the thread and um, and the and the button. Um, Kate, can we go back to uh, seeing you for a second? Are you there? Oh, I don't hear you. Oh, sorry. There I am. Okay. Oh, so, sorry. I, I've been talking and being muted. Perfect. Well, oh. next. <laughs> so, <laughs> excellent. Um, the uh, the pieces that I have right above me, everybody, that you can look at, and I'm going to um, uh, solo these guys so you can see them. You may remember these pieces that Janice did. They're very similar. It was another one of the precursors um, to, to this piece that Janice did. It's the bracelets that she made with these faceted ovals. And we just got a bunch of the faceted ovals in and they should be restocked back on our website. We have some, but if you show them as being out of stock, just add yourself to that notification list and you'll get that notification when they're back in. Janice is gonna talk a little bit more um, We'll talk a little bit more about these beads and I have some here that we'll chat about. But you can see that with this necklace, she did the with the griffin um, and knotted in between. With this necklace, we used the Ceylon in fine. And so the Ceylon in fine was doubled. And I'm sorry, in micro, not fine. The micro goes two strands inside the bracelet here and then one on either side. So both of these techniques, you can see Janice made a necklace length here. Both of these techniques will translate. If you wanted to mix in some pearls and have the thread showing on the outside, you can watch that show. This one, um, these ovals are so pretty. 
to mix around with it. But I just wanted to share with you. And she used, instead of the freshwater pearl, she used this stone here as the closure, which looks really nice. Right. After the show, Kate, I will, in the, uh, the description, I will link all these projects. Um, just okay. In the description down below on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll do it as Perfect. soon as as soon as um we're done we're with done them. so there are different um, ways you can use your uh your thread this way which we used uh the griffin you only have one thread and mm -hmm. so uh unless you're going to add a thread around the beads so that you can macrame which is definitely an option what we're doing here is we're actually going to not in between each bead. Um, mm -hmm. I want to talk a little bit, if you can uh, uh, zoom in on the project, today's project. Mm -hmm. on her, oh, her tray. yep, got just, it. I want to just show another reason I think this is a really nice sample, uh, not in terms of, oh, well, I made it, so it's beautiful. But do you notice that it's not symmetrical? I just started out and then uh, I wasn't thinking and I ran out of uh, the, the faceted ovals and I said, oh, well, I'm just going to continue with just the pearls and make it the length I wanted it. And so it's a, a testament to how you can really do anything. Uh, if you've got the color right, the design will follow in this case it's monochromatic. And so it's got a mood uh, that it feels very soft, um, but you could do this with multiple colors and um, also have a, a success. So mm -hmm. I want to just share that um, with everyone. And the beauty of this piece, let me just add, is that this button closure, this button closure could be worn at the side like this, if this were the, the bottom, worn at the side, it could be worn at the back, it could be worn in the front. It's really, when you take the time to um, really decide on the clasp and curate the clasp that you're using as much as you curate the beads that are in your project, then it doesn't really matter where this clasp ends up. Right, it can add, it can end up uh, anywhere in the necklace, and it can be worn at any point. So, Janice, I'm going to go ahead and spotlight what you're doing on your design board if you're ready for that. Yes, I am, I am. Okay, so. and I would go ahead, JP, if you could position your camera just or push the board up a little bit so we see a few more of your beads and less of the triangles. So, move the triangles away from you. Oh, because okay. we want that close up. Just push okay. the board uh, away from you a bit. There we go. Now we can get in a little bit closer and see those beads. Great. I hope that is that nice and sharp. Yeah, looks okay. good. So I'm going to begin with putting on first. I've got one of the smaller freshwater pearl uh, buttons that I'm going to push on, and this is size six, which seems a bit large, but it works well with both these facetous gems and um, the freshwater pearls. So I'm gonna bring it down almost to the end. Here we go. And I'm going to put a double overhand knot. I don't wanna lose this button for any reason. If you find that, uh, Oh, let me back up for a second, okay? Let me stop for a second and sure. let me show you these things that I have. These are my right. twist threads. And I have one pretty much in almost every size. And I use this. It's like you you always, this has got the needle on it. And, um, you know, Kate, I think I'm going to work on the back of, I'm going to work on this velvet pad. The I, board, sure. Yeah, I think this is too. There's too many things to look at. Is this a little? Okay. Better? Is this better? Sure, that looks great. 
So what I have here is I've got a card. It's a number six. Um, and I tried, I, I go to the end and I try a bead. And when I want to try another bead, like there, I've got a little eight odd. I wanted to try that and see how the knot looked. I will keep a, this card. Like Emily doesn't throw anything out. Um, I I don't throw out the any leftover silk. Uh, and I will mm -hmm. use, also keep these sample cards. So um, I would suggest that you have one, you know, in maybe a color you don't always use or something, but that you have a sample card. So I'm going to just get, uh, now that I've, I'm going to get, get this here on this and I'm going to put a double, so a, a double knot. So I go one and then I go two. And if you needed to, you could go three. And I'm going to just put that knot in just like that. You want it big enough, but you don't want it so big. It looks... Um, it, it looks, I don't want to say offensive, but it, it looks crafty. You want it to look really professional. And you've got, I don't know if you have a nice side or a, a bad side of your button, but, um, you know, pick the nice side to show out. When we're done, we're going to put a drop of GS Hypo Cement right on that knot. And then you can either cut it close or you can use a thread burner. Um, either one. But that's the first thing you do, okay, is you start with the button. And then Kate's always using her all to do the knots. I am. And I'm going to try because I always do them with my hand. And I'll, I'll show you first how I do it. I just use my hands, but I will do an all for another one. So what I did here, let me do it again. Kate and I start out the very same way, I think, where we make an overhand knot. We just make a loop, bring the thread through. And I, I wanna make sure you all have gone to the end of your thread. You're not working halfway down your thread or three quarters of the way down. You're coming down to the end because if you don't, then all of the thread above that is no good because you won't have the needle. You want to use all of your thread up so you start at the bottom. And so I have um, I have my knot and I'm using two of my fingers to just hold that knot. So this is how I do it. This is my all method, I guess. So I pull it so I have this little triangle. And then because it's a it's the kind of cord that it is, I come in with my fingers and I pinch right above it. So I'm pinching that knot and then I'm gently and slowly pulling it in. And that's how I do a knot with the griffin. Kate, do see, you Jay, sure, do you want me to show you? Yeah, I, I think everyone would like to see how you sure. do it. I'll do some more after you shown how you do it with the all. Sure. So let me get this prepped here and I'll show you. Let me spotlight my my piece here. Yeah. And there's a couple of ways that I, I want to show you guys how I might do this. I've got my pearl button here. Let me get a little tighter in so you can see this. And you know, we were doing this at the um bead retreat we talked a lot about pearl knotting and boy did we miss you jp in the pearl knotting discussion but next year when you join us when all of you join us at the bead retreat we're going to do some more pearl knotting um again i have used this size silk a uh, size six silk in the silk i wanted to mention the higher the number is on this silk the thicker the thread is going to be. Okay, so if we go down, if you wanted a thinner thread, we would go down to a size four. Size four is nice for floats. We use the four a lot in floats, but six is also nice too. It just depends on the thickness that you need. And again, 
Janice's little tip on how to test them, have her little testers. That's a really great, um, a great way to um, just double check and make sure that your beads are going to sit, you know, are going to fit in your threads because there's nothing worse than stringing on and then realizing, oh, I've chosen the wrong size thread. So here I'm winding it off like Janice did. I'm going to go all the way at the bottom and I'm going to come in and I'm going to actually put my face myself on the screen here for a second so you guys can see this. I've got my thread on the floor. My thread, the end of my thread is down here on the floor. And can you see I'm holding the needle up here in my hand. And I'm going to step on that thread, lean forward, and I'm going to pull on this thread. And see how when I pull on the thread, I'm really going to pull on it. Let me stretch. I'm short, so I've got it. And this is two meters, so I am less than two meters tall for sure but you can see <clears throat> that i've stretched the kink out of the thread okay so because when it comes on the cord it has that crease on it right but that stretch pulls pulls that that little there's a little bit of a, a kink in the thread here but it'll 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 come out. But for the most part, it's nice and stretched out here. So I'll go ahead and tie that knot double like Janice did once and twice. And can you see here on the end how the end is unfurling a little bit? You can also see that this thread is doubled, right? It's a twisted thread. So it's doubled back on itself. So I'm going to come in, tie that knot. I'll add my GS Hypo Cement here. And I will add my button. Now, like Janice said, let's figure out what side. I think I'm going to put this side of the button outer facing. And this just goes on. Now, Janice, you put a knot between the button pearl and your first pearl, correct? Yeah, you have to. You yeah. Have to. Because yeah. you really want this button pearl to be nice and stable. Okay. So, that knot helps to kind of hold that button in place and make it nice and stabilized. So I'm going to go ahead like Janice did. This is that overhand knot, right, like that, and I've just come through. Now, what I do is, can you see how here's the knot, and my knot has slipped down a little bit, right, just because I set it down right here on my velvet pad. Now, you can use the awl. And I'm going to show you how to do this, and then I'll show you how to use the tweezer as well. So I like knotting on a surface that kind of is, is soft because I can put the tip of my awl down into my beading surface, and I can very gently pull. See how my awl isn't going anywhere. It's buried. It's hard to see because the button pearl flips over. But it's buried in my velvet pad. And so as I pull that tighten to tighten up like this, I'll gently ease it off the awl. I'll turn it over so you can see it. See how my knot now is loose like this? I'll do the same thing that Janice does. I'll pinch the thread and I'll push that knot up so it's tight. Now, you can also, let me show you here our next little trick and someone saying that they've also seen ironing the thread to unkink it you can i also have a little i've got it right here it's a small hair straightening iron we got this tip from our friend alice howe at one of the bead retreats you can turn that on and you can iron your thread to iron that kink out of it um someone is asking about um, can you use a knotting tool? And, you know, not, and Janice, I have you on mute real quick because I think there was a little bit of background noise for the moment. Oh, sorry about that. Let me do this. Um, Janice and I both use our hands for 
nodding. Um, what I find, and Janice, I'm going to unmute you because you might want to chime in here as well. Um, yes. There, I find that the nodding tool is a little thick and it doesn't always land the knot right where you want it. I, I'll, I hope I'm not offending anyone by saying this, but I think a knotting tool is a big waste of money. Yeah, I tend yeah. to agree. I mean, if you want to learn how they do it, you know, like, I don't know, when growing up in California, we used to go into San Francisco and to Chinatown, and we would see, uh, it was mainly women behind the counter, knotting these long strands of pearls, and they were just fast, 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 fast. They didn't use a knotting tool. And mm -mm. The, the story of me trying to learn to knot, um, it's, it's such a saga, but in the end, once you get it, you don't need a tool. So mm -mm. Uh, try it this way and come back and watch it multiple times along with the pearl knotting videos we have and i will link those after um we're done today but i mm -hmm. think i think you will be happier if you use uh your hands i'm just yeah you, i think you've got a little more control over where you land let me show you guys another way you folks another way how to push that knot up this is something that i shared at the bead retreat and it was a real um, epiphany for many people. So here's my bead, all right? There's my knot that I tied, my next bead. I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna tie that loop and I'm gonna set that loop so da uh, down right here, okay? Like so. Now, you could also use your tweezers. I can show you that method, but I wanna show you this. Janice, I think we're getting a little bit of feedback from you. Can you move your um, your earbuds way out of the way if they're close? Yes. I think that might help. We're getting just a slight bit of feedback when I'm talking. So I'm actually going to mute you for a second. There we go. Sorry about that, you guys. A little bit of feedback, but going across the country uh, <laughs> isn't always easy, but we're getting it down. So see how I have this bead here? I put the bead on. See where my knot is? Now I'm going to back up a little bit here so you can see this. See how I've got my finger here? I'm pushing my pearl up against the next pearl, okay, like that. And watch, when I pull this thread tight, and I'm just gonna go slowly, see how the pearl acts as the knot pusher. See that there? I'm gonna do that one more time. Janice, you might have seen this um, method being done also in Chinatown, I think, using the pearl in front of it as the pusher of the knot. Can you hear me? Yep, I have you unmuted. Oh, okay. So yeah, I have seen that done. And I've even, um, when I was in Beijing with Dottie, Dottie, if you're out there, hello, I miss my time with you. Um, yeah, they this it's, it's very intuitive. Um, the other thing that you might want to, the other thing that you might want to share, Kate, or I mm -hmm. was going to, is that you can also pre-string the whole project mm -hmm. and it just sits on one end and I will show everyone when I go back on, it sits on one end and then you work on the other end. Mm -hmm. so you don't have to stop. That's another thing you see in Chinatown. You don't have to stop to put each bead on. They're all pre-strung. You look at and your you just design. slide them down, right? Yeah. yeah. Now I didn't do that with this necklace because I would have, you know, worked on the design first, decided that it was all going to be, you know, symmetrical. 
but I put them on as I felt it. And that's why it's kind of all over the place, but it looks pretty. Yeah, I think it's nice. Now, let me show you guys one more thing. A lot of you are really responding to this not pushing, uh, this, you know, using the, the pearl as the not pusher. The thing is, you guys, when you do this, you don't want this to be one big grand gesture. You've got to work small. So see how I'm pushing. Let me get up a little bit closer so you can really see it. But I want you to, you to see where I'm placing my hands. See here, the thread does not move at all until you have that pearl in position. So see the space between the pearl, the new pearl and the old pearl is pretty tight. And can you also see, here's where the knot is. So the knot has some, you know, not a whole lot of space there. Whoops, and I moved the, the pearl out of the way a bit. So let me just push that, push that back up. Now watch what I do. Now, when I pull this thread, I'm going to zoom the camera out. The pearls now don't move, only the thread. My finger stays where it is. This pearl stays where it is. This line of pearl stays where it is. And I'm just pulling with my hands this thread. And see how once it gets small, then I use my finger, my index finger, to push that pearl away and tighten everything down. See that there? That's it. That is it. I'm going to go ahead, JP, and unmute you. And uh, you can go ahead and um, and uh, continue with your nodding. You're on. Okay. So um, while you were on, Kate, I, I did some extra nodding. And I also added more pearls to this so that I, I basically can pre-string. I can pre-string my design if I want. And what I'm doing is basically uh, what you're doing. So I'm going to pull this up a bit. So maybe we can see, Does will this stay up? Let me tighten this. Okay. <laughs> I know. Okay. So you I'm got it. I know. On this end, I have um, all the pearls. And do you notice... My thread is not pre-stretched. My thread mm -hmm. is not ironed. My thread is actually how it comes exactly off the card. I don't touch it. And the reason is, is because when I'm doing this, it's pulling on the thread, it's tightening the thread, and it's stretching the thread. So mm -hmm. I don't do any of those things, but um, that's just... That's just me. So I'm basically doing what Kate just did, just a little differently. So I am, I am, uh, well, now I'm going to show you another method because I can't remember the first one. Uh, let me, <laughs> I'm going to go back to the first one. So I make a loop. And in this case, I'm bringing all the pearls through. So that if you were on an airplane and you wanted to do some knotting while you were flying, you don't have to have any tools. So now I have the loop here. I'm bringing, I've got the triangle and I'm bringing it right down. And see, that's the knot that Kate was saying right here. You push up and then you pull this thread. Well, I'm doing it just a little differently. I'm pushing the knot down by using these fingers and this hand to push the knot right up against the pearl so that it's flat. It's flat from here. It's not this, it's, it's right on a nice even plane. Then I just bring my thumb and my forefinger up. I pinch right below it. Don't let any pressure up. If it gets too tangled, just untwist it, go back to pinching again. And then when you're near it, you can just go like that and in it goes. I also like to take the next pearl down or the next bead down 
and push on it to tighten it as much as possible. So yeah, it looks great. So essentially you're using your thumb and index finger as the pusher rather right. than the pearl. It's really the same, very exactly. similar. Yes, exactly. So, mm -hmm. um, And you'll find your own rhythm, you guys. I really urge you to just buy yourself a few cards of this natural silk and just practice and play around with it with no... Um, big outcome. And the more you practice it, the better you're going to get. Yeah. Now we have a quick question, <clears throat> Janice here, hmm. um, that says, does the continued direction of the knot, like say, if you're always tying the knot in the same direction, does that make a difference? Or can you tie one knot like with the thread coming over and one knot maybe with the thread coming under? In the larger picture of things, do you find that that makes a difference? It makes no difference because- Yeah, I didn't think so either. Halfway through a project, especially, a, I'm gonna try and come in a little closer. Uh, halfway through a project, uh, sometimes uh, it, the, the, the knotted pearls get way too long and pulling them through to do the finished project you you go from another direction and it doesn't make any difference. So um, I haven't found going from one way to another makes any difference. Um, right, and also not tying the knot from if you make if you bring your thread in from the top or from the bottom. No, that doesn't make a difference either. Now, now what we I hope everyone will. Be as excited at some point as Kate and I are because we are bringing back the beautiful silk uh, on spools and we're going yes. to do massive pearl knotting episodes um, in, I don't know, pretty soon, right? Pretty soon. Let me, let me do a quick, I'm going to do a quick teaser. You guys are going to love. How do you do a teaser? You show this. us color i'm just going to show you i've got one of the spools sitting here janice i you know i've sent you some but yes. i'm going to go ahead and spotlight my camera here so you guys can show this and then i'm going to ask another question here <clears throat> here's one of the it's wrapped i haven't even unwrapped it yet <clears throat> pardon me but this is the silk i'm going to just open it because this is one I'm going to use anyway. Um, they yeah. come individually it. wrapped. What's that, JP? You have to unwrap it. Yes, there it is. And look at the sheen here. We're going to talk about traditional pearl knotting with using a double strand of the silk thread. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. We finally uh, found this... Um, uh our renewed our resource for this and we've got some beautiful colors coming but this sheen it's going to be really exciting so keep your eyes peeled this is coming uh it's coming fairly soon so janice do we uh what else do we want to talk about i'm going to put your hands back on the screen here okay. um uh, do we want to talk about length what do you want to talk about next with this project uh, we could talk about length. That's a good place to start. How much? Um, because we also need to talk about like the closure and how we're going to uh, do this. Right. That's one of the reasons I was continuing. And we're a little, you're a little low. If you wanted to be in the shot, you're a little low. There you go. Great. And let me actually answer this question while you're doing those knots. So Cindy's saying she's got a couple of spools and have no idea what to do with it because the sizing is like a size E or a size F. Mm -hmm. So let me tell you, Cindy, we are going to be carrying, let me spotlight mine, and we're going to talk about this a lot. We're going to be carrying the size F, which is equal when it's doubled to a size 4 about right um so we're going to use this doubled you can also use it doubled over twice if you want a thicker thread so f is really the size that janice and i both 
um, uh, use a lot of. Also, there is a question floating around, can you use Ceylon for this? And of course, we've done a lot of knotting with our Ceylon. Let me get these in here. You could use regular Ceylon doubled over. That's going to give you a really thick thread. You could use the fine Ceylon doubled over. And I use that <clears throat> sometimes for beads that are larger, usually with pearls. If I'm knotting pearls and I'm looking for it here, I'll use the micro and I'll double that. <clears throat> I'll double that over. I have a sample so, date of what's that? I have a sample that I started with Ceylon. Oh, great. I'm going to put your camera back on right here. So this is just regular Ceylon with pearls. That and is that the single strand, Janice? A single strand. And all nice. you do is, you know how you make the glue needle? Mm -hmm. I mean, this, this thread, this Ceylon will go through this particular pearl. On the smaller pearls, um, it's a little um, thick. Well, it, it's it it's it doesn't stay hard enough in order for it to go through the pearl. So you want to do the glue on the end, mm -hmm. and, and then with your <laughs> um, your thread snips, just give it a little bit of an angle cut. But absolutely, you could use this for knotting in between. Can you use this for floats and a single? Well, we use it. Um, it's not as twisted as the Griffin, but there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to. Uh, we've ne I don't think we've, have we ever done a float with single Ceylon? I'm trying to think. Well, I mean, it's similar, Janice, to like the Odyssey when we use linen. the wax linen singly. We would right. do the same thing. Right. Only we wouldn't have, you know, instead of using the wax linen, we'd use the Ceylon. Right. <clears throat> Um, I did want to mention the needles for that, and we're going to add all uh, sizes of needles. I know that you guys are going to be really excited about those as well. Let me um, let me uh, spotlight my camera here. It's hard to see because this is such a small needle, but you're going to use this needle with the flexible. I. Okay. And we are going to carry when we roll out this silk, we're rolling out also four sizes of this wire needle from extra fine all the way to heavy. And we'll talk about all of those sizes and everything. Um, the big eye needle, Kathleen's asking about the big eye needle. Kathleen, the big eye needle is just too rigid and the interior of the big eye needle might be a little rough on this thread and it'll be a thread breaker. So I would set that big eye needle aside and use this flexible wire needle like this. Okay. Uh, so Janice, I'm going to put you back in the spotlight here. And let's take a look. Janice is nodding right along. She is, we're both pretty fast pearl knotters. And someone mentioned earlier, Janice, that pearl knotting really is kind of a, a dying art. Um, how long have you been knotting pearls? Oh, 40 years. At least, right? Yeah, 40, 45 years. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it a long time. Yeah, it really is a skill that you practice and then you you have that jewelry making skill. Janice and I always tease each other oh. that what is the backbone of jewelry making? Is it wire wrapping or is it pearl knotting? Well, I'll tell you, Janice, that today the backbone of jewelry making is definitely pearl knotting because it's a dying art for sure. So, um, well, which came first, right? The wire wrap or the pearl knot? Yeah, <laughs> we have you know straw and hay and fiber to string beads on with first, 
or did we have wire? I rest my case, everyone. Well, now what thread, uh, what stones are you using there, JP? Oh, these are, aren't these gorgeous? These are the labradorite, um, which, you know, they, we always push the gray side of the labradorite and that's why I use the gray griffin. But I also like them with these champagne pearls, which have a peach mm -hmm. glow because the stones also have this sort of fire in them, this peachy fire. So, mm -hmm. um, and as you know, I always say everything in nature goes with everything else and you, you just can't pull a bad palette. There's no such right. thing. So, um, we didn't talk about length. Right. Um, a lot of the answers to the length of things is in the pearl. I, I've got a just remember where direction I'm going here, um, is in the Pearl Nodding handout, which is on our website, which I think is linked on this project page. But if it isn't, I will link it after today's episode. But um, in terms of thread, you usually, uh, for whatever length you want, if you're going to put knots in something, you want to have about double the length or two and a half times the length of what you're knotting. So if you're doing something, let's just say it's 10 inches, then you want the, your thread from the first knot to the end to be 20 or 25 inches. If you're using double thread, then that means you have to cut twice as much thread. So we have a really long piece of the griffin but you should always have whatever your thread is, at least double you're looking at, if not more, because as you get to the end and you're pulling that, you're making whatever loop you're going to use, you need extra thread to pull that needle through. So be generous, don't skimp on thread when it comes no. to knotting. And that's why there was a question earlier, Janice, can you just cut the thread? I'm going to spotlight mine here real quick. Um, can you just use the thread off of, you know, like cut a bit off of the silk card? Remember that the end of the silk here is wound around and yeah. the needle is on the other side. So like Janice said at the beginning, you want to make sure and work all the way down to the end of this cord because the needle is on this side. If I were to just cut some to use, right, with the needle here, the rest of this thread wouldn't have the needle on it. So I'll go ahead, like if this was a bracelet, I'd string up my bracelet, I'd finish it, I'd cut it away. And if then there was a usable length, I would come back in and wind it back on my card. Also, someone asked about what size card cord are we recommending? <clears throat> we're using the size six of the Griffin Silk today. We carry, beadshop.com carries a wide variety of the silk um, going from like size two, which is very, very thin, all the way up to size eight. I think we carry some in the 12. The, the number six and the number four are the ones that I use the, the most. But like Janice said, she has her little pieces of practice thread that she, it really just depends on what the beads are that you're using. All of the beads that you're using have to fit on the size of thread that you're using. So you need to test them out before you translate it to your finished piece. Okay. So JP, you tell me when you're ready mm -hmm. and I'll go ahead and switch over to you. Okay. I am. I thought we could uh, show the macrame loop soon. Yeah, how to I think it. it's about that time. So uh, do you wanna, are you getting set up for the macrame loop? Yeah, I mean, it's sort of a, I've, I'm at an odd length, but I'm not really a bracelet and I'm not really a necklace, <laughs> but. Um, do you need a few more moments to no, not a few more? No, I um, I think this is okay. I, Okay. Um, I should I should get out some 
Ceylon. Um, okay, you let me know when you're ready because I'm also showing how I'm adding, just see how I put three pearls on all at once. This really is how I go ahead and do this. See, I've got these three. I'll pull it down here. I'll do my wrap, pull those pearls through. And I do this Janice method a lot where I'm just doing this with my hands and then tamping it down with the next pearl. So this is what I call, um, this is what I call Kate speed. Janice, I've also muted you because I'm getting a little bit of that feedback. So I'm just watching when you're ready. I'll go ahead and um, put you back on. Sorry about that. You guys, we will, uh, we'll get the uh, East Coast, West Coast feed um, down. But sorry about that little bit of feedback. <clears throat> but see here how I have the pearls in my fingers like that. I'll pull them off. And the holes are really lined up like this. And then I'll just come in and line, line those up like so. And then we'll just slide them on down. And like Janice said, she's not, she didn't do any pre-stretching because as you're tying the knot, you're really pulling and kind of tugging on this thread as you go. So I'm gonna do that, pull that in. And then I'll kind of bring that pearl down and I'll tamp it down like that as well. So JP, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, spotlight your, um, your table here and I'm gonna go ahead and unmute you. Okay, perfect. So here I am and I'll come up a little bit to show you, uh, I'll show you the board. There you go. Oh, this does, this is really pretty agricultural. <laughs> <laughs> so here's, here's the end. I've got a piece of the twine holding the button at this end. And I, I really don't want to clamp on the pearls if I can help it. So I'm using just a piece of twine that I cut and I looped it around. Here's the back. I looped it around the, the pearl. And then now I'm holding it with one of the clampers. And then this side, um, I'm going to come down a little bit more so it's nice and sharp. And I'm going to show you, I just tuck, clamped this to this end of the board. That's okay. And um, I haven't cut my, th my griffin. It's still long. Um, and I, um, I've got the needle on the long end and I have to decide now, am I going to do the button loop in Ceylon or am I going to try doing it with the Griffin? So, um, I'm going to try with the Griffin. I'm going to make the button loop with the Griffin. So I am not cutting the needle end. I'm not coming up here and cutting the needle off because I still have an, I've got two meters of this thread and I don't need very much to make the button loop. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to cut off, I'm gonna say, let me get my tape measure. I usually use maybe like 20 inches. It might use up most of it. Um, the reason I'm a little, you know, I'm not going to say dazed and confused because I think I used Ceylon for the button loop and I forgot to list it. Yeah, uh, I think you did, JP. This is actually, let me, I'm going to show it kind of close here. Yeah, isn't it? You're getting that. I use Ceylon, right? And we didn't yeah, list this. It. Well, we'll list it. Okay. This is, whoops, sorry about that. Let me, um, my camera wants to go out. This is the Ceylon right here. I think you use probably copper rose. That's what it yes. looks like. And see, so here's the end. This is the, the griffin coming in, knotted, knotted, knotted. And then Janice is going to cut her length of the Ceylon cord and um, wrap, you know, and, and do her macrame loop. I am just trying to tear my uh, earbuds. 
Janice, I'm muting you because we're getting a little bit of feedback from you there. I know. Let's try that again. Do you have it now? I do. Do you have the echo now? No, I don't. Looks good. Okay. All right. I'm so, going to get you back to your board. Okay. So let's just try doing it with the Griffin. Let's see what happens with the Griffin. Okay. Okay. Let's, let's just, you know, we've never done it with the Griffin. Let's do it with the Griffin. So, so what you've done, JP, is you have cut your Griffin, the remainder off the end, and that's what you're going to use for macrame, correct? Yeah, and I, I've okay. got a little bit left, but I've pretty mm -hmm. much, yes. And then I'm going to put this Ceylon under here just to confuse everyone, but we're not using that Ceylon. I'm just um, using it to uh, lift up the, the thread so that I can work underneath here. Um, and so basically we want to make a button loop on this end, like this one over here. Let me get this out. We want to make a button loop like this. Um, and I'm out of focus, aren't I? It's trying to focus on your hand and the pearls at the same time. There we go. Okay. So we want to make a button loop like this that's big enough for the pearl that we're using, the pearl button. This is much bigger. So it's not going to be a very big one because I use the tiny uh, the tiny button, but, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to leave a little bit of space right here and we're going to start our macrame square knot right about here, because what we're going to do is we're going to double back. Whoop, we're going to double back and then we're going to knot down here, down to the end. I, I know Kate, you like to go over your macrame and it gets thicker. Mm -hmm. Um, I am not so much a fan of that. I like to see it thinner. So I'm leaving a little bit of uh, space right here. And then I'm sure that works. Me. So um, I'm just going to put a tiny drop of the hypo cement right here where I want to start my macrame. Just a little bit so that it's going to hold the thread. Um, for future. I'm going to put my glue over there. Now I'm going to take, and I would say that I have here in my hands uh, 20 inches, 24 inches. Let me move this out of the way. 24 inches of the griffin that I've cut off. No ironing involved. And I'm going to match my ends so that it's even. And then I'm just going to do the square knot. And I start with the P. And then I go to um, the other side. We're going to just leave a little bit. And we have a really great tutorial. If you go to our skill builders, we have a really terrific tutorial on the um just the basic how to do the square knot and also if you love this technique you can watch the poetry uh segment of uh our our projects um and poetry is also going to give you a lot of ideas for this janice you let me know um i've got a couple of things to show can i do that while you're macrame yeah yeah, this is an interesting knot, Kate. I mean, it's not, it's different. It's kind yeah. of fun. With the, uh, with the, yeah, with the silk. Yeah. So let me show you guys what I've got going on over here. And I'm also, I'm going to mute Janice because we've got a little bit of that feedback. Um, <clears throat> what I've got here is, uh, there was a couple of questions about stones. So I'm going to answer those questions now. So on Janice's piece that she did here, she had the pink pearls and then she used the strawberry quartz for these. I have a few of these uh, faceted ovals in my uh, bead box here. Um, and I chose, I was trying to figure 
which ones I wanted to use. These are going to be restocked. We've got some of the lapis, um, some of this amethyst, and some of the smoky quartz and the labradorite are all coming back in. You can see sometimes there's a little bit of variation in size on these pieces, but I loved this smoky quartz. And what I love, liked about it a lot is that if I'm wearing this necklace, I'm a big fan of color blocking. Um, and so this will have the pearls, then it'll go here into the smoky quartz. And what I should have done is kept like one or two of these out to finish this side with, but I'll, I'll find something to, to finish it off with there. So you can see I've these um, smoky quartz fit on this size six. I'm going to slide here. I am going to, I'm going to make this knot and I've used the, the color of cord is just the color that Janice uh, sent me. And I believe it is the carnelian color. Let me see what it is. Yeah, it's the car carnelian. It's like a kind of a, an orangey color. And you wouldn't really think about using that orange color with, um, with these beads, but I'm a big fan of when you're pearl knotting, I like to add a color into the mix. And if you see, let me show you, I've got a strand of pearls right here. If you take a look at these pearls that I've knotted right here, take a look at the thread color that I've used. I've used a, this is like a charcoal or a black. I'm really fond of using that dark uh, thread because I feel like it adds a depth to the pearls here, right? So color, which is why I got these on the, the silk on the spools, um, I just love, this blue would look amazing with this. So you're gonna see as we continue our pearl knotting journey, um, how the color of the threads really come into play. This is, I've got a bunch of, um, my personal pearl pieces here that I, I brought these, they're sitting here because I brought them from the, from the retreat. But can you see here, these pearls, these have been knotted with gray. I use gray quite a bit as well. Uh, these are silver pearls from my freshwater pearl collection. Um, but when you're purchasing your silk threads, go ahead, I mean, thread is cheap, you know, fairly inexpensive. And if you have kind of a, a good variety in your bead box, you can just kind of on the spur of the moment, make some decisions um, about, um, you know, about color. Janice, I'm going to go ahead and unmute you. Okay. Um, how are you doing? How are you doing over there? I'm doing great. I'm, I'm, um, you let me know when you're ready for me to spotlight you over there. Uh, basically, I guess at just about any time. I'm, okay. I made the loop. Let me uh, let me bring you in. There you go. Okay, I made the loop. I'm I'm not going to finish it, but I want to see that it fits. It does. And what I did is I just basically. I want to make sure it's showing up in focus. Can you see that? Gray on mm -hmm. gray. That's what we do all the time now. Mm -hmm. uh, I've left that little bit of space. I've done, um, let me count how many knots. Maybe a couple extra. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, 16, and I think I made a mistake there, but oh well. So you before you um, before you loop this over and close it, you want to make sure it's going to fit your button. So you pinch it where it comes together, kind of maybe stretch it a little bit. And now this is thread I've never done this with before, um, although I think it looks pretty. And I'm trying it with this and it's, I wouldn't make it any bigger than this. So I can look at it. I could have made it even smaller, 
Um, but I think that's that's fine. It's kind of fun, this, this thread with this. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this cord. I'm going to wrap it around the loop. I need to cut another piece of this cord. I'm going to wrap it around this loop. And I'm going to clamp it to the side. And I'm going to finish the macrame. I want to, I want the extra cords to actually be on the back. So I'm turning it over. And I think I'll turn my board this way. And I'm going to clamp this. Let me see if I can get you guys in the picture. I'm going to clamp my loop. I love having a loop to clamp. And then this, you, you have to be patient with yourself because you have to, on this end, you want to you wanna make sure everything else is clamped nice and tight before you do your macrame. So I will take like another clamp and I'll clamp this here. And I am missing some clamps. They're in the other room. So I'm going to just, because I don't want to get up and move. I'm just going to tape my pearls to the end of the board. I'll show you how I do this. This is really <laughs> jury rigging it. <laughs> well, this is, you know, when all of a sudden it's heart stopping. You're like, where are my, where are my clamps? Yeah. Well, they're in the other room. I was trying to yeah. get her off the desk and I thought, oh, I only need two. So now I have, I have, um, I'm on top of all these beads. I have my two macrame cords. I have this cord, which I really don't want to move. So you could take a pin, put a loop in it, a knot, and but I'm just going to tape it down like that. Just, you know, me and my magic tape. And now I'm going to do my macrame just right over um, that, sp that space of thread that has no macrame. And it should be, you know, I'm going to say probably four knots. And I want to make sure it's nice and firm. And uh, this is how I finish it. And these are the clamps that we sell on beadshop.com. These are our clampers. Right. Um, clampers. They really come in handy. Right. We have them. We have them online. We've got it all. Yeah. Well, that was an Emily uh, insistence that we carry those. Yeah. Oh, hi, Em. Oh, 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 no. You're saying that she said we have to carry them. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then I'm going to do the one more. And um, then I will add some glue to this. And Kate, you are so good at this where you just feel like all you have to do is really glue it and then cut. Well, yeah. yeah. But you really need to let that glue yeah. soak in, you know. You, you can't be cavalier about your gluing. Yeah. No. Um, so this, if I pick all this up, I haven't done any of the gluing yet. I'm going to pick all this up, and I'm just going to turn this over so we can see it on white. We have, we have the loop here, and there's the button, and this is going to go through here like this. Just like so. Yeah. Looks great. And Emily is here. She's working and watching at the same time. Oh, fun. Hi, Em. It's me, your Virginia <laughs> sidekick. Okay, so I'm going to take the glue now. And I'm going to... Um, oh, you know, I forgot to mention, when you're trying your thread, 
uh, out the right side, whatever your thread is for knotting, you can't try just one bead to see if it fits on. You have to mm -hmm. try multiple beads, a bead in the middle of the strand, a bead at the end, because sometimes they drill them to different sizes. So on this one, and we're going to have to see how the, the griffin works. We're going to have mm -hmm. to test this because this is a first. So I put some glue on that side. Then I'm putting some glue on this side. And that's it. Now in all my travels, I just have to find the top, which I will. Right. That's always the trick. Yeah, that's always the trick. But you could also use a cosmetic sponge that works uh, nicely. But that basically, and then what I'll do is I'll take the thread snips. Or if you have a, a, a thread burner, you can just sear that off. I worry, though, if you're using like white thread and you use the thread burner, that that little dot right there becomes dark, too dark. Mm -hmm. This is going to dry lighter. And then all these mm -hmm. will be cut off, either with the thread snips or with flush cutters. And that's the, that's all there is to print. That's that looks, it. it looks great. This is it just really like, looks great. This is like an American Girl doll necklace. <laughs> yeah, there it is. It looks awesome. Yeah. Well, let me show you. Let me, um, I'm going to spotlight because I've been kind of moving along here while you've been working. Okay. And it's a testament to kind of using what you have, right? So Janice, you sent me this carnelian thread, this color, this orange. And I had these smoky quartz. This is a full strand of the smoky quartz. And we also carry, and we have them in stock right now, this six millimeter lapis round. Now these are three colors that I might not actually use together all the time, but I wanted something semi-precious. I didn't save any of these pearls right out for the other side. And I've been talking about color blocking for a while. And on the camera, it's a little bit dark. In person, it looks pretty good if I do say so myself. What I want here is I, I really feel like I need to bring that pearl in. So I'm just going to look around. I've got to have one pearl in my stash, you would think, out of all the pearls that I have. So this is also a good uh, lesson in planning your piece. Here we go. I've got this is out of just my personal stash. And I'm going to find some more big pearls for you, you guys, I promise. I won't tease you with just showing this personal bead. Um, but, you know, Janice was saying as she was planning this piece, as she was designing it, she was just kind of going along mm -hmm. and doing it. Same thing with here. I used all the pearls she sent me. I used the strand of semi fresh the, the, the smoky quartz. I grabbed a um, pearl from my stash. And now I'm going to move to these six millimeters. And this is where you would go ahead, just like Janice was just saying, to double check that this six mil will fit. Sorry, again, there's a little bit of that feedback. Janice, did you want to add anything here? I just wanted to say that the genius of adding that one pearl, which makes the intention of the color blocking of of beads that don't necessarily like play well together normally um, as colors, it makes it work. It's suddenly like 
they're meant to be like this. You made the decision to separate them with a nice white pearl. I, I just think it's great. And you can see, thank you. You can see here that each of these sections are a little bit of a different length. So I'm gonna um, spotlight my front here and I'll hold this up. And I'm guessing this is about 20 inches. Mm -hmm. I'll look and see. See, I've got maybe, I have five lapis on there. Maybe I need about five more. And then I do the loop, maybe six more. So that each, let me bring this back. So that each section here, it's going to be about right, about right there. I'm just going to sit that there. Each little section of beads all has a different length to it. And it looks like I need about this many, two, four, six, seven of these. So it is an eclectic mix. These pink pearls, this smoky quartz, this very light, light peach pearl, though it reads white, I think. And then these guys here, these lapis rounds. You could do the same thing like Janice did here. You know, she just went, went for it, started, 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 kept going and went, oh my goodness, I'm out of these beads. Well, who cares, really? She just came in and intentionally just strung the rest of these out and put that loop there. So it's really okay to change ideas midstream. I'm gonna go ahead, Janice, I'm gonna get your uh, your um, audio back in. Should, uh, I'm, I think I can take our boards out and just put you and I in. Okay. Or is there anything else that you wanted to show on your work table? Uh, no, but I wanted to tell you that I have four more of those pink pearls if you want me to include them with the sample when I mail it to you. That's okay, I think I'm gonna just call it a day. Okay. So let me remove that, remove me, and here we are. There we go. Great, can you hear me? All right, I can, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, let I can hear a little over. bit of echo, so we'll have to figure this out for next time. Yeah, but we're getting there, look at that, we're getting there for yeah. sure. Yeah. What a fantastic project, Janice. You can find all of our um, all of our learning. Uh, oops, let me. I'm doing this here. All of our learning and all of the project and everything right over on our website. Let me put the correct banners up so you can see this. All of the information on the project and the products from today's broadcast are right on our website. If you sign up for our newsletter at beadshop.com, you're going to get all the latest news from us. And please do make sure to follow us on all of our social at beadshop.com, at The Bead Table on Facebook, and hit that like, subscribe, and notification button on YouTube right at this very moment. We'd love to have you follow us there. We're so close to 100,000 followers. And when we get that 100,000 followers, we're going to start doing some more special stuff there. So that is that, everybody. Um, thank you all so much for joining us. And Janice will be back with a new project soon, right, JP? Yeah, I'm trying to make a heart. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> it's close. There you go. Well, fantastic. And uh, you can uh, later on after the broadcast is complete, Janice is going to go in, we'll add some links, some more things right to the comments below. So you'll be able to, uh, see some of those shoppable links there. All right, JP, we will talk soon and all of us will talk soon to you. I'll be on Friday for free tip Friday and you're not going to want to miss it because it involves, it involves this yeah, pile of beads right here yummers i can't wait do a so, on friday and friday we'll also do a giveaway we will we will we'll do a gift certificate giveaway
as I cradle these beads like they're my newborn child. I will see all of you all on Friday. Thanks so much, everybody, for watching, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.